Good morning, friends. Happy 5th of July, and welcome to another painting stream. Hi, everybody. How are you doing this morning? It is the first Monday of the month, and here on my stream, that currently means, you know, I'm sort of playing it by ear as always, but currently, that means it's Community Art Day, which in turn means that today is the day to hang out with me in my chat and talk about the art that you're working on. Every day is that day, really. But I'm going to try and highlight some of the stuff that shows up in my Discord. Uh, so hang out in my Discord channel. I'll pop that into chat so that if you're not already a member, uh, you can hop in there and uh, join the Discord go to the share your accomplishments channel and post whatever art you're working on so that we here in chat can sort of boo and ah and enjoy it as a group so yeah ah community art day this is going to be fun it's also going to be fun because i am playing with a new mini so what i did last community art day back at the beginning of june is I painted up a um, War, uh, Age of Sigmar figure uh, and tried to work on uh, shading and uh, NMM, which I wasn't super successful with, um, but you know, it's a, it's a progress thing. It's a learning how to paint thing. Um, and worked on light sourcing, which looked pretty good. Uh, so I had fun with that Stormcast Eternal figure that I worked on last month. This month, uh, for Community Art Day, I have this cute little fellow. It's actually two little fellows, but we'll get to that. Uh, this is a pain boy. It is an orc from Warhammer 40k. And let's go to overhead cam so that you can see it a little bit better. Uh, actually, I should adjust overhead cam. I had adjusted it up so that when I was painting the uh, the larger terrain, I could fit it under the camera. But I should adjust it back down so that you folks get a better view. Ba -ba -ba -ba. And let's, uh, let's take a look at this little boy. So. Here we are on zoom cam, and you can see I have primed this in white, which is not something I usually do. I usually prime my minis in gray or black. I primed in white this time uh, because I'm going to be using some very bright primary colors on this, and I wanted to make certain that they were brilliant as possible, and I figured the best way to do that was to do it over white. So uh, let's talk about my mission for today. My goal today is to paint this mini, um, as I said, in very bright primary colors. Uh, I want to do it as if it were a uh, comic book panel. So we're going to do it with a very simple palette. Uh, I'm going to choose six colors uh, and then we're going to exclusively use those six colors. So let's, um, I'm going to do two reds, two greens, and two yellows. And that's going to be it. Well, and black and white. So we've got black, which is my surface primer. We have uh, white, which I'm using off-white from Vallejo. So black and white. Uh, we'll have two reds. We're going to use scarlet and red. This is that dark burgundy red that I'm so fond of. Actually, no, 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 no. No. I'm going to use scarlet and I'll use flat earth which is a brown. 
So those are my two reds. Uh, I'm going to use deep yellow, which is a very bright, as you can see, yellow. And I'll use filthy brown, which is a sort of a um, muddy orangey yellow, uh, sort of a mustardy color. Uh, and then I said I was going to do two greens. You know what, I'm also going to want a gray. So for the gray, we're going to use Castle Gray. And I'm having trouble with the greens. Um, I want a dark green and a light green. Uh, I guess I'll... There's this lime is a, a nice light green. I wonder if I have anything brighter though. I want something really eye popping. Uh, for the dark green, we'll use this olive green, which is one of my favorite colors that I've used quite a lot. Um, but I'm going to consult my WizKids Pile O paints and see if I have a bright green. This is called Scorpy Green, and it's a pretty bright green. Let's see if I've got anything else. So that's my palette. Um, and my goal is, we'll see if I can get this to work. Uh, my goal is to paint everything in these few colors. Put this away. Um, and um, use like stippling for transitions and use black and white for sharp contrasts to give it a sort of comic booky feel. You like my new avatar? Thank you very much, Lobster. Uh, that is courtesy of my brother, Jam Torkberg. Um, he didn't give me like a link or anything to share. I was like, do you have a website or a uh, link that you want to advertise with? And he was like, no, I'm, you know, he doesn't feel like his art is his primary focus right now. Um, he's been doing, like, programming work and stuff like that. But I think he's in a marvelous artist, and he did this fantastic avatar for me. Um, so he's also working on other stuff for the channel. Anyhow. I figure I should just sort of dive into this, right? Um, happy Community Art Monday. Let's, uh, let's see what I can do here. So this is going to be very much a journey of discovery. This is a model I've never painted in an army I've never painted. So I'm not as familiar with orcs. But just looking at this guy, there's a lot of fantastic detail that I'm going to want to highlight. Let's start with his orky flesh. So there's this fellow here, right? And then he's got a smaller guy astride his back with a sort of syringe. So let's start with their flesh which we're going to do in that 
exceedingly eye-poppingly bright green. Look at that stuff. Look at it. This is going to be fantastic. All right. So I'm going to start in on his head, I think. So my notion is, instead of doing a wash or anything like that to... Um, to highlight the shape of the model. I'm going to do uh, highlighting by painting really sharp, dark shadow in. Uh, I want to give it a sort of a cell shaded look. Uh, if you've seen games like um, What's the sailing Zelda? And uh, that sort of look. I want to do that with this figure, where it's just bright primary colors and a sort of cartoony, cell shaded look to it. We'll see if I can get that to work. Wind Waker, absolutely right, Amanda. You'd think I'd know this because I've played it at least twice completely through. Just the sculpt on the orcs is very cartoonish uh, and it's full of great lines and I feel like it will be enhanced by a cartoonish mode to the painting that's my hope at least we'll see if I'm able to actually make it work he's got a single tooth on his jaw here, so we'll perhaps try and highlight that. This is interesting painting over a white primer. I'm not used to doing this, and the look of it is slightly different than I'm used to, but that's cool. Today is all about doing new and different things. That sort of figure I can use my community art days as an excuse to do something cool. It's a, an opportunity for me to try and experiment and uh, broaden my horizons, learn new techniques, all that sort of stuff. So you can see he's got this sort of electronic monocle over one eye here. We're definitely going to be Playing around with that. So in terms of community art, uh, if you've been in my Discord channel, you probably saw that Azra, who is uh, one of the folks from the Battleground community, 
posted about a uh, RPG uh, learn to write thing that they're participating in. And that looks really cool. As well as a published uh, role playing game author has done some works in 5th uh, edition D&D but also in some other RPG systems <clears throat> so that was very cool to see that post show up in my discord um, early on in June friend of the stream Insidious Pie posted into the Discord some pictures of necklaces and bracelets that she had been working on. She made me one for uh, Quincy Pride, which I really appreciated and enjoyed having. Quincy Pride was fantastic. That was it was a little bit hot, bright, and sunny, but it was the perfect weather for a get-together outdoors, full of people. Celebrating all sorts of diversity. I really enjoyed going to Quincy Pride this year. On that note, I guess... Happy Pride Month, because every month is Pride Month, right? Doesn't have to be just June. I see no reason that we shouldn't celebrate Pride Month this month, too. And every month. As usual, I'm trying to be very precise with my painting. Look how bright that is, chat. I'll probably have to do another coat. Because you can sort of see the white of the primer beneath shining through. But that is exactly the green I was looking for. Just, oh, so bright. All right, uh, so that's the head. Let's do his arm here. I'm trying not to touch the um, the needle on this syringe that the guy on his back is wielding, because I've slightly bent it. I think just in transportation when I was taking this to work to prime it. I don't want to make it any worse. There is so much interesting detail on this model. I really want to highlight as much of it as I can. It's a relatively small model, but just packed with amazing detail. stuff. He's got a whole bunch of stuff hanging from his utility belt. It's like a bone saw and a hook, and a drill. I 
I'm gonna try and make those look metallic by combining gray with white highlights. Let's see if it works. July is Disability Pride Month, officially. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. that's reasonable. I am bad at time estimations, as we all know very well. This might perhaps have been a good occasion to um, prepare a handle for this model. It's something that I don't generally do when I'm painting. and I'm going to want to have had one today, and I didn't. I didn't glue him to a base because I wanted to be able to reach all the bits on the bottom without having to like paint around a base. That just means that I don't have anything to hang on to when I get to painting some bits. Nah, yeah, we'll make it work. I do love how bright this green is. Perfect. Uh oh. Got hair. How'd that get there? I actually want to add a cat hair sound effect to my stream. Um, That's gonna happen. <laughs> That's my oops sound effect. It looks like sound effects are working today. I think I, I feel like I did make the right choice um, priming in white. Just look, it, it makes this look so incredibly bright, which is exactly the effect I wanted. Yeah. 
Here's a question. He's got very long fingernails. What color should I make those? I'll probably paint them orange. Didn't hear the coffee alert. Hang on a tick. I may have spoken too soon. I took the precaution of making my So I've got the uh, sound alert website up in the back room, background, and there, yeah. it has a refresh option. No, it's not that critical. It's just upsetting. It's just, why? Why doesn't it work? <sighs> when I looked at this website on Friday after my stream, um, I was able to find a whole bunch of sound alerts that were trapped in a... Uh, a Q. Disable. Oh well. It's, it's frustrating, and I... Whatever. I'm not gonna mess with it. Oh, hi! Welcome! To my good friend Josh. How's it going? I'm curious what art you have been working on, Josh. Because this is Community Art Day, and I feel like you've worked on a lot more art than I have down through the years. I'm sort of. You can see I'm working on uh, painting this Warhammer orc in eye-poppingly bright colors. But I've seen lots of your art posted around down through the years. Glad you could uh, come hang out.
write stories now and again. Writing is art, definitely qualifies. I haven't done any writing in a while. And I do enjoy writing. Got a couple of writing projects sort of backburnered. I started a uh, NaNoWriMo a couple years ago. Got about 30,000 words in and was having a wonderful rollicking time with that. So I should return to that at some point. And I've got other writing projects that I have planned but have not executed. I hope you're enjoying your day off. I hope your dog was not overly disturbed by everything explodes day. I think I saw that Katie is doing a daily art project right now. That seemed kind of cool. Yeah, the, the daily index card art. She posted about it on the Facey books. The Facey space. So chat, Paracoon is one of my oldest friends. He's a friend of mine from high school. So somebody that I have known for many, many years. And we don't get a lot of opportunities to catch up. So it's very, very cool that you were able to pop into chat. Cool to see you. So I'm sort of, as I'm painting, looking at the rest of the sculpt and thinking about how I want to attack some of these other areas. In keeping with the, the tone that I'm trying to do here and the, the project I have undertaken. Done with the green orky flesh, we'll uh, work on some of his clothes. He's got this apron on, and then under the apron, he's got uh, some trousers. It's nice to paint figures with trousers after doing all those untamed beasts didn't seem to think trousers were a very important thing in life. Uh, and he's got a, a boot, and then his other foot is this 
mechanical foot. So I have to think about how I'm going to differentiate the boot from the trousers. Because I think I'm probably going to do them both brown. Maybe? Maybe not. Hmm. Josh, one of the challenges that I have set myself with this painting project is that I'm trying to do this with a very limited palette. So I'm trying to do this with about seven colors, which means I don't get to... Uh... You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the classic um, map painting problem. The, the idea that you can paint a any map using only four colors. So I'm going to be trying to paint these guys with very few colors, but still have their various parts distinct. figure out what color I'm going to do their trousers. Like if I do the trousers red, then how do I differentiate his trousers from his apron? Because I want to do his apron in red. I've definitely set myself a challenging goal here in trying to do this with as few colors as possible. Yes, red goes faster. This is actually canonically true for orcs. I've talked before, chat, about the fact that orcs are the most powerful psychics in the universe, but don't really realize it. And things that they believe to be true end up being true. And one of the things that they believe is that red is faster. So if you paint something red in an orc army, it gains speed. I didn't know you got into uh, 40k. That's true, yeah. If you spend time online, you learn things. Like I'm, I'm certain you have seen the phrase Mordaka, also an orc thing. say I was going to use yellow 
as one of my colors in my limited palette. So I could do the trousers in yellow. And won't that look garish? Yeah, exactly. It used to be just a spiky blob. All the detail. And it does have a lot of detail. Uh, but all the detail was obscured by the, the prime. Priming it in, uh, in white definitely hid a lot of the structure. Now he's beginning to take shape. You can see his big grinning face here. And the little fellow on his back. Almost done with all the green flesh tone, and then we'll move on to something else. Oops. While I paint the stand for my camera. pretty good so far. So yeah, let's do his trousers next. And I guess I'm going to do his trousers in yellow. Orcs have great fashion sense. I don't know that that's true at all. I thought about uh, bringing purple in so that I could give him incredible Hulk pants, but decided against it. Super bright yellow that I'm using. I'm going to do that for his trousers. This is where priming in white really comes in handy. Um, I've, I've probably talked before on stream about the fact that you usually need to paint yellow over a bright color. It's one of those colors that just does not work in a single coat over a uh, dark primer. Over a black or gray primer, you need either several coats of yellow, or you need to paint in white first, and then paint yellow over it. And then 
doing, yeah, I'm gonna do his apron in red. And then he's got a lot of straps and stuff. He's got a utility belt. We'll do all that in brown. His boot we'll do in brown. All the metallic areas we're going to do in gray. So Josh, do you have any fic that you would want to share with my chat? Or do you feel that it is not really appropriate for my chat? Oh, and I've got a hot button topic for you, Josh, because you were one of the people I knew who was most into it. How do you feel about the new upcoming adaptation of the Asimov Foundation Trilogy? I feel like this is something that you would have thoughts about. I'm curious about your hot take, TM. Thoughts and opinions. Yes, yes. also do he's got there's a lot going on here on his arm because he's got this band but then he's also got this bit here I don't know if I want to do all of that in red or in yellow I guess I can change my mind one of the things about painting is you can always change your mind. I'm gonna do the trousers on the other orc as well. The one who's on his back. Oh, I asked you uh, if you had any fic that you were comfortable sharing with my chat. Because you could uh, post it to my Discord if you would like. Or post a link to it in my Discord. If that's something that you're interested in doing and if it's something you'd like to share. Alright, that solves that question for me. I think I'm going to coordinate their outfits all matchy-matchy, which means that the band on his arm is going to be red because the band on this little orc's arm will also be red. And I'm noticing that I missed some portions of the little orc's flesh. So, so back to green.
could see there. Okay. Making some progress here. Yeah, sure. Google Drive links work. Just trying to plan here. I think I'm going to switch to red. Oh, no, wait. Uh, there's bits of hand that I missed here. some of that too. Um, Josh, were you in chat earlier when I posted the link to my Discord? Or do you need me to post it again? I've got it in my uh, chat bot, so give me a sec. Okay, there's all the yellow and green done. Oh, cool. Thank you, Josh. Oh, progress. All right. Uh, red time. We're using scarlet. It's very bright. As with the other colors that I've used so far. Very bright. Apron. One thing about this plan that I have for how I'm going to paint this guy is that I'm not going to be doing a wash at all. So I can't rely on a wash to save me from my mistakes, which is, you know, a wash is good at that. Trying to be a little more precise, and sometimes I am. It's getting there. Ah, okay. Yes, that makes sense. You are a Harwich in my Discord.
keep noticing areas that I wanted to highlight in other colors. I'm having to go back. Enjoying how these very, very bright colors are interacting on the model. expected it to look like as I got these first colors on. switch brushes to get some of the more delicate areas. So does anybody have exciting plans for the 5th of July? Now that each all everything explodes day is over. I think uh, Amanda is very much in recovery mode. She, uh, we hosted a large gathering of my family and her family here yesterday. First time we've really hosted a large gathering here since we moved into the new place. And it was, it went very well. I think everybody had a terrific time. We had a ton of wonderful food. We used our new grill, new charcoal grill, and that went well. But it was rather exhausting, and there was a lot of prep involved. So Amanda's, I believe her plan today is to collapse. And I am 100% behind her in this, this plan. Um... Obviously, my plan is to paint, and then I have to go to work, where I will run a magic card tournament, hopefully. It is Monday, so it's Modern Monday, and the modern players have been having a terrific time now that Modern Masters 2 has hit, people have some strong opinions about the new 
D&D &D magic set that's coming out in a couple weeks. I think it's kind of hilarious, but I don't know if it's going to be commercially successful. But the last time I said that was Strixhaven, and Strixhaven did very, very well for us. So I guess I should just admit I don't know what casual magic players want anymore. Yeah, I've never had a cat that's particularly disturbed by fireworks or thunder. Clara is a very, very nervous cat, but it's mostly people that she doesn't like. done with this base coat. There's a lot of little details yet to highlight, but we've got some of the primary colors done. switch brushes here. I'm getting to some uh, more intricate detail type areas. Certainly Clara is happy to have the apartment to herself again. We're getting to some of the more Um, mechanical areas on this model. He's got his artificial foot and his artificial arm. And I want to... I don't know. If I was going to be painting this in a more traditional manner, um, those would be a lot easier because I could do some washes over them and 
bring the detail in there that I want. Oh no! I painted his chin red. It's not what I intended. It's fine. But because of the challenge that I have set myself for this community art day, I'm not going to be doing any washes on this piece. So I'm going to have to do different techniques to make the mechanical bits pop. If I should add another color, if I should uh, bring in some blues, it would give me more options. I wouldn't really be departing from the bright primary scheme. Add a little bit of blue in. Almost done with the reds. And we'll work on some browns. A lot of brown leather straps and stuff. This little cylinder here red.
Alright, when I finish with this red, I'm going to take a short break, get myself some more coffee, stretch a little bit, encourage you folks to get up and stretch and get a drink and do whatever all you need to do. Let me just finish this, this tube, this pipe. And I also want to do his uh, armband. Also seeing another place that I wanted to go that green flesh tone. His arm. I do not want to blend colors. That's not my mission today. There we go. back work on browns and grays we're definitely going to finish the base coat today I may not get to do any detail work we'll see on the one hand I'd like to get more work done on the other hand um, I probably have to wait for some of this to dry before I can start doing highlights and stuff to it.
Okay. I'm going to take a short break. He is looking interesting. Definitely some fun color going on there. chat uh, do whatever you need to do to uh, like get yourself a drink or a snack or if you need to use the restroom or whatever else you need to do I will be back in a couple of minutes Let me get myself some more coffee
Hey chat, I'm back. Let's go back to Zoom Cam here. All right. So I hope everybody stretched and relaxed and got ready to do a little bit more art. So here's where we are right now. Um, we're going to move on to browns and then do some grays. Maybe some blues. Thank you, Josh, for posting a couple of stories. I will definitely check those out. All right. Browns. We're using flat earth. It's just a very generic flat brown. for all the leather straps and stuff and for his one boot because he only has the one foot. got this sort of buckle on the side of his foot. Not sure what I'm going to do with that. Right now, I'm just painting it brown. Not going to bother painting the bottom of his foot because that's going to be glued down. here much smaller detail he's got this uh, utility belt that has several pouches and things on it
reasons why we really run into um, problems with my limited palette. This is the handle for his drill. definitely reaching that point where I'm like, can I get away with not adding another color? Can I get by with just the colors that I've already added? And with highlights and such. To bring them to life. I think I probably can, but he's got so much cool detail. In his various equipment, and I feel like I'm not doing my duty if I don't do something to call attention to it all. Eh, we'll see. There's a little belt here. little bellows in brown. I imagine this is involved somehow in actuating his mechanical leg. Just a tiny bit more crimson and do this little piece here in crimson. What do you think? Maybe not. I do need a little bit of crimson for his companions. It looks like his uh, little, the one on his back 
has a smock on as well. You can see it right here in the skull. bunch more straps and belt and stuff to do. Getting... I think we will finish the base coat today. And then tomorrow... I'll do more playing around with uh, edges and details and stuff like that. That's when we're really going to start to bring in the sort of tune shading look that I want to try and do. That's where this really gets complicated. This is the easy part. But the plan that I have, the scheme that I have, is going to get much more interesting as I start doing some of the sort of tunish cartoonish year. details that I want to try and get in here. You're still strong. 
I do love this model. There's just so much going on here. I love the details and stuff that Games Workshop puts into their sculpts. Like the orcs may be a fairly silly army. Does not mean that they're not complex in their own way. Why did I not paint the top of his boot? almost tempted to get a second one of these so that I can paint it using more traditional techniques and sort of compare and contrast the two. Keep reminding myself that I'm not going to be doing a wash on this. So I really don't want areas where the base coat is too obvious poking through between that I've painted. So, as soon as I'm done with these brown bits, which I've got most of them done already, um, I'm going to move to gray, and that I can apply in just huge swaths, I think. All of his mechanical bits I'm going to do in gray initially, and then rely on uh, edging and highlights and stuff to make them less bland.
looks all that little bellows there. Bottles on the floor. Everything's fine. Okay. Almost done with the brown. Get these straps here. Chat, do you think that my camera is too dark right now? I feel like you're not getting the vibrancy of this piece. Hang on a sec. There. Oh, yeah. How's that? Eye-watering, right? Okay, just about there. I'm gonna do a couple more red highlights, I think. Like these little cylinders here, I'm gonna do in red. And then we're gonna do a whole mess of gray. Whole mess of gray. today just because I need to allow it time to dry before I can start doing 
some of the sort of finer work that I want to do. Definitely got some nice, bright, primary coloring going on here. straps right here and then we're gonna move on to the gray I'm gonna do a lot of the tubing in black which is I don't know it's a difficult choice to make because it doesn't leave me much room to um, play with it. Once it's black, you can't darken any further than that. Because of my palette decisions, because I'm trying to do this in primary colors with without a lot of secondary colors, um, I'm just not going to be able to do subtle shading, not in a traditional manner at least. Which is kind of the point of what I'm trying to do with this piece. Is that's the challenge that I've set to myself. 
is can I do highlights and shadows and stuff like that without doing a wash and without really doing dry brushing just relying on some precise brushwork so that's my challenge and that's what I'm going to probably be working on tomorrow so let me finish these straps and then we'll just work on getting the gray on all the metallic surfaces Basically, we've sort of got some rough basic shapes right now. And we're going to be working tomorrow on trying to bring some life to the model. Alright, pretty happy with things so far. I think the uh, iris of the camera when I initially set it it was because uh, I was doing it with a you know completely white model so it was trying to compensate for that and now that the model is not completely white the iris can open a little bit more and you get to see more of the actual color that I've applied okay now the gray that I want to apply uh, is what did I just throw on the floor? Oh, oh it's the off-white. I'm gonna need that later. Okay. For gray. I'm actually second thinking this chat. Let me think. I was going to do all the metallics in this gray, in Castle Gray. I think, in the spirit of what I am trying to do, I'm going to do all the metallics in Sky Blue. I think that's more honest to the, the color scheme I've got going on here. The tricky part here is I've run out of places to hold the model. I've been holding it by his hand here, but I'm going to need to paint that. talking about earlier where I said perhaps I should have attached 
something to his feet so that I could actually hold him by some place other than by the model itself. Note to my future self, next time I'm doing a longer community art day stream, I need to remember to bring a plug for my phone, because I'm going to run out of batteries, and when that happens, I'm going to lose my chat. I've got it on the computer screen, but it's so far away from me that without my glasses, I can't read it. These are meant to be hanging from this rope here. I assume they're just metal blades. This was probably the right decision. This is much more vibrant. I, I don't want him to suddenly have a whole lot of dark to him. I am legit actually chilly right now. After the last week or so, it's quite pleasant.
of spaces here where I've worn the paint off already just from holding him in various places. Oh well. I might have to leave a portion of the, uh, the base coat incomplete just so that the rest of him can dry so that I can hold him while I paint the remainder of the base coat. I like this little detail here. It's like he's got a uh, motorcycle kick pedal on the back here that this little dude is sitting on. switch brushes. Let's find the finer detail areas that I need to hit with this psycho brush. And then I'm going to switch back to my fine detail brush. Buck 
vocals here. Was, I need a more detail brush to be able to get. It's like a carabiner. This stuff is hanging from. sort of clamp sort of thing over here. saw that he has hanging from his belt here. So pleased I decided to go with blue here. This looks a lot better. So I feel pretty good about what I was able to accomplish today. Um, a lot of the base coat I find when painting a mini is learning about the model. It's discovering the details that you're going to want to highlight. And I think I found a lot of those details. I'm really pleased with the extremely bright 
primary colors that we've got going on here. I think all of this works with the sort of cartoony mood that I'm trying to evoke. And it's going to be fun starting tomorrow to start adding some detail into all of this. Because we're going to be relying on Like I said, sort of a cell shaded look. We're going to be going in and doing a lot of fine detail work in blacks and whites to sort of reduce the all primary look without actively doing anything to it down like I don't want to um, blend at all I'm gonna I'm probably gonna be using some dry brush technique but it's going to be very harsh contrasts I'm not going to have um, lighter shades or darker shades of the same color I'm going to be relying on A different sort of aesthetic. The particular challenge of doing no wash, I think, is going to make this the most interesting to me. I am definitely, ooh, definitely used to relying on a wash to um, cover up any number of sins. And the fact that I've decided not to do a wash on this is going to make it an interesting artistic challenge for me. Very much looking forward to tomorrow. I'm going to be adding a lot of detail tomorrow. there. I got a, a couple areas that I'm going to be doing just matte black, mostly tubing. I think I'm going to avoid painting the claw here today, just because I'm holding it by the claw. Not 
certain what that's supposed to be. Oh, I see. It's so this syringe here. If it were a syringe handled by a human, it has these two finger rests on either side of it, and he's got his chin in the uh in the finger rest of the syringe. Cute. A subtle, funny little piece of the sculpt. syringe weren't all bent. Oh well. It was a weak point in the model. Okay, I'm going to quickly switch brushes and see how much of this blue I can slap on to finish off today's stream. It's already 12.30. I know 
I mean, community art day is a day when I am definitely prepared to go long. I sort of, I planned for today to be a slightly longer stream, but I do have to get myself some lunch and I do have to get myself ready to go to battleground. So I need to, uh, need to accelerate a little bit here. Uh, this brush is not as precise, but that's fine. Quickly get a little more paint on the model. We can do touch-ups tomorrow. And tomorrow, I'll start in with the shading and highlighting and stuff that we're going to be doing with uh, the sort of cell-shaded technique. We'll see if I can get it to work. It's an experiment. This whole thing is an experiment. This whole figure. Because that's what I like to do with this stream is experiment. Try new things. Attempt to learn new talents and techniques. So far, the results of this have been very striking, which I'm happy with. Um, starting from priming in white, which I'm not used to doing, to playing with bright primary colors and not doing any shading really. It's a slightly eye-watering effect right now, but that's intentional. And we're going to see tomorrow what I can do Bring it a little more, bring a little more subtlety to it. In the meantime, I think I'm going to say thank you so, so much for joining me, folks. Um, particularly nice to see you, Josh. I'm glad you had a day off and could come hang out with me for a little while while I did some painting. See what tomorrow brings as I begin to do some finer work on this piece. I've gotten most of the base coat done. And it looks interesting. I mean it's a great sculpt. I mean there's there's just so many fun details and it it begs to be played with that's why I chose this figure for this experiment because I was like I've never painted an orc and they have a sort of cartoonish flair to them And I feel like this is an opportunity to do something really new and different for me. And so far, it's been working out pretty well. I 
I'd say the base coat is 80% done ish. Somewhere around there. Decisions to be made and details to be added. that he's got strapped to his left hand and then we'll call it a day for today. So not much more to do today. Some touch-ups I need to do tomorrow. Definitely. and a lot of detail work that needs to be done. But we'll get to that tomorrow. And we've got his whole mechanical gauntlet to do. There's definitely a lot of touch-ups that need to be done because I've, as I've been painting, I've wiped off some of the paint that I've applied. You can see, like here, on this, uh, the straps on this here. That's all right. Touch-ups are easy. We'll do that tomorrow. We'll start in on, uh, we'll do his gauntlet and we'll start in on shading.
pretty good. Not completely perfect, but it doesn't need to be yet. All these um, hoses and tubes I'm going to do in black. Oh no, I broke one. I have to glue that back together. All right. So chat, thank you so much for joining me. I hope everybody has a very pleasant 5th of July. I have been enjoying myself a great deal and I feel like we made some fantastic progress. I look forward to tomorrow. I'm gonna go grab myself some lunch and get ready to go to work. Um, in the meantime, be excellent to each other, friends. Thanks for joining me for Community Art Day. It was really good to see you. And enjoy whatever art it is you choose to do. I'll see you again tomorrow morning. Bye, everybody.